Mr. Corelli, I still don't have hot water. I'll look at it later. I have a baby. I need hot water. It's the boiler. I'll get to it. Martinson. I need to be calm, you know, we're all here to help you. Can you tell me in your own words exactly what happened? She was asleep. And I, and I went to go fix her a bath. And there was still no hot water. What time was this? 11.30. I went to go find Mr. Corelli. Mr. Corelli? Superintendent. I see. And to remind him about the hot water. Can I help you, ma'am? What's going on here? And you are? I'm her mother. <laughs> what? <laughs> the baby. Where is the baby? <laughs> she, she's gone. How? I just, How? What happened? They won't look for her. She's gone. Somebody took her. Why aren't you looking for my baby? Can you calm down, please. Ma'am, can you help us out here? I need to get some information. Let's go sit down over here, Sylvia. We'll talk to you. <laughs> so, who was with the baby? She was asleep. I was only gone for a minute. The baby was alone? Yes, asleep. And how long were you gone? I don't know. I, I can't remember. About? Five minutes. And when you came back? I was gonna, I was gonna make her a bath. And I started to heat up the water. How long from the time you came back inside to when you actually found the baby was missing? 
When you went outside, you said you left the baby. <laughs> when you come back inside, did you see her missing immediately, or...? About ten minutes. Kelly? Where's your husband? At work. Oh, my God, he's gonna kill me. Did you call him? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> he travels. He's away. He's uh, in Florida, I think, today. How do we get in touch with him? He calls every night. Do you think the kidnapper or the kidnappers were looking for something else besides your baby? I mean, the uh, rooms, they were ransacked. No, I, I, I did that when I was looking for her. Allie! Well, what happened? Look, oh. why do I have to keep answering all these questions? I mean, somebody took her. She could be gone far away. I assure you, we're doing everything humanly possible. Now, um, I need to make some phone calls, and then we'll continue if that's all right with you. I'm going to show him where the phone is, and I'll be right back. Okay. Mrs. Pearson, she seems... Confused. Disoriented. It's attention deficit disorder. What? It's a disorder. Disorder? What kind? It's a, it's a concentration thing, ADD. Uh-huh. Is this like a medical thing? Of course it's a medical thing. I mean a recognized medical problem. Well, it is now. It used to be called hyperactivity. I had to take her out of school. Why? To protect her from the other children. You know how cruel they can be. They made fun of her? They thought she was stupid. But she was just a little bit forgetful, so I, I, I had to teach her at home. How did Sophie feel about that? She hated me at first, because she loved school, but she got over it. It was for her own good. I understand. Don, get a shot of that side, please. Of course we tried, but no one knew where to reach you, Peter. For God's sake, get a car All phone. right, just let me talk to Sylvie. She doesn't want to talk to you right now. She's afraid you'll be mad. Man, why would I be mad? That's ridiculous. I know. Well, for God's sakes, man. Well, you know how she is. Well, don't leave her alone, man, all right? All right, all right. I'll stay here until you get back. He said that it was all right to leave her for a little while. That's how they do it in Europe. Now, they're not so paranoid there. They even leave their kids in their hotels when they go out to dinner, so they don't wake them as much. But it's better for the kids that way. Peter's catching the first available flight. I just spoke to him. All right. All right, well, we'll comb in the neighborhood. The men are doing a house-to-house -house search. In the morning, we'll expand the perimeter. In the morning? Why not tonight? If we don't find anything in 48 hours, we'll call in the FBI.
behind. Tell me, Mr. Walker, what do you do? We design security systems for uh, corporations most out of state. So you travel quite a lot? Yes. Mm -hmm. For how long? I don't know, a week, more or less, depends. Any family? Well, yes, I've got a father in Utah. I try to see him once a month if I can. Listen, I... Any reason you can think of why someone would want your baby? No. Are you in any financial trouble? My what? Money, loans, contracts, collections. No, listen, I told you, I just started the what business. I'm... Have to do with Tell me, Miss Pearson, the uh, French doors, were they open? French doors? I don't know. I. Um. Wait a minute. Uh, the curtains. The curtains were moving, and, and I was cold. Once again, Miss Pearson, were the doors open when you left? No, I closed the doors. The uh, responding officer said the doors were open. No, no, I didn't open them. I closed them. When? So. I, I, I don't remember. I, I, I was cold, and, and, and I came in, and I, and I closed the doors. Well, did you leave them open when you were out to find Mr. Corelli? Don't look at him. You either closed them before you went away, or you left them open. Well, what you? I need to think, okay? Just give me a moment to think. Sylvie, you have to do better than this. You have to remember everything. What the hell does it matter whether the doors were open or closed? It matters closed? to us, Mr. Walker. It matters to us that you can't remember. Come on. Let's get some air. Tell me something. What did you mean when you said he'll kill me? What? The other day you were upset and you said he'll kill me. Who, Peter? I, I didn't mean it like that. Why would he want to kill you? No, he wouldn't. I I just meant he'd be mad. Why would he be mad? Because something happened to the baby while I was out. But it's not as if you yourself did something to the baby. No. Then I don't understand why you thought he'd kill you. It was just an expression. Sylvie, this thing you have. Thing? The attention thing. My mother told you. Yes. Does that make you forget? It's hard for me to concentrate sometimes. I was on medication until I got pregnant, and I'll go back on it once I stop nursing. What does your husband think about all this? Peter? Yes, what does he think about you having ADD? Well, he doesn't think I have it. He thinks it's something that my mother made up to hold me back. You and Peter aren't married, are you? Well, we meant to. Well, we were going to. It's just that the baby was so sudden, it, and we, we couldn't... You couldn't what? We couldn't make any plans. We wanted to, though. It's just we were waiting for Peter to make enough money. How long have you been together? A year, almost. I know how it sounds. How does that sound? Like we're kids or something. But with Peter, nobody has ever been as nice to me as he is. Where did you meet him? I was working in this store in the mall, selling eyeglasses. It was such a boring job. I really hated it. I always tried to be nice to the people. But it always seemed like they were looking right through me. Like I wasn't even there. I took all the breaks I could. <laughs> My boss didn't really like it, but it was the only way I could get through the day. Just try and figure out what I was going to do with my life. The first time I saw him, he was coming up the escalator. And he was already looking right at me. He looked so handsome in his uniform and all. The kind of guy I knew I could never get.
After that, we saw a lot of each other. We'd meet on our breaks, on the mall rooftop. I felt like someone from one of those fairy tales, falling in love. I know it sounds stupid. No, I bet you have guys falling all over you. <laughs> I do not. Uh-huh. I bet you have to carry a stick to keep them away, too. <laughs> Stop it. Don't you ever have to get back to work? No, do you? Yeah, I guess. You don't like your job very much, do you? Well, it's just that I'm not very good at it. You know, I, I keep people waiting. I forget what they want. I never give them the right amount of change. But other than that, you can't wait to get to work anymore. Right, exactly. You know what my father says? What? My father says that if you don't like your job, it's not your fault, it's the job's fault. Yeah, I like that. So maybe it doesn't challenge you enough. Oh, I'm definitely challenged. No, no, I mean up here. I mean, you have to have a job that comes from your heart, right? I mean, something that really means something to you. And if you don't, if you don't have that, you're just, you're punching a clock, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, like everybody else. And you? Is your job to challenge you? This? Oh, no, no. No, but this is just temporary. Because pretty soon I'll have Walker security systems. I'm going to travel around the country, and when I meet people, I'm going to sell them on me. See, if, if I go and I take some guy out for lunch, I'm not going to take him to some fancy restaurant because everybody does that. I'm going to, I don't know, I'll bring him up to some rooftop like this. And we'll sit around, we'll have sandwiches, and we'll sit under the sun, but I'm going to sell him on me. I like the way you think. <laughs> You know what I think? I think that we think alike. We don't like the ordinary. Are you crazy? Uh, no. You can see everything better up here. No, I don't think so. I will not let you fall, I promise you. Come on. Come on. Sylvie? Because I believe it was fate that brought us together. like, what do you call it? Love at first sight. Right. I'll uh, leave my man here. We'll uh, keep the phone tap. Our best chance to resolve this usually comes in the first 48 hours. I have to tell you some problems with your statements. A lot of inconsistencies. If you remember anything, even though it's anything that can be done. Seems a little convenient, though, that she can't remember. Sorry to interrupt you like this, sir. I've got a class in 15 minutes. It has come to our attention that you counseled your daughter to abort her baby, and that you opposed the pregnancy openly and uh, vigorously. What is this? What right have you got to ask me these questions? Well, we do have to do a uh, thorough background check, Miss Pearson, routine. Is this information false? Where did you get your information? Well, that I cannot tell you. No. I'm 
sound? No, it's not false. Could you please explain your opposition to your daughter's pregnancy? He loves me. He's not ready for this. Neither are you. He wants a baby more than anything. He's a security guard at the mall. Not for long. He's going to open his own security business. Sylvia, you never follow through on anything. You lose interest in a job after two weeks. This is not a job. It's a commitment for life, Sylvie. You don't understand that. Peter doesn't even realize that you don't. I know what a commitment is. I want this baby. And I'm going to... You're going to expect me to take care of it when you lose interest, and I'm not going to do that, Sylvie. I'm not going to ask you to take care of anything. I can take care of my own baby. I want you to think about having an abortion. I'm going to be late for work. How many jobs would you say your daughter has gone through in the last six jobs in two years? Is that correct? Maybe. I don't know. I don't count. How do you feel about the baby now? I love Kelly. And your daughter? Does she love the baby? This interview is over. So you came back out here a second time because you thought you might have left Kelly out here. I was confused. You couldn't remember if you had your baby with you or not? I'm sorry. I, I know this is hard for you. Do you have children? No, I don't. Then you can't know. How long have you lived here? A year almost. Peter already lived here. So you moved in as soon as you met him? You say it like it's a crime. Not at all. I just have to know. It's not like I planned it that way. It just sort of happened. I don't know. I mean, she means well, but sometimes I just feel like she's smothering. That's what mothers are for. No, I know. It's different with her. She treats me like a child. Well, then that means it's time to break free. Like you? Free as bird? Well, my, my mother's passed away. And uh, my father, he's in a nursing home out west. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's better. He, uh, he's well taken care of. Can I ask you a very important question? Sure. How come you don't have any furniture? Because it takes up too much space. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, uh, I do have some music. If you like some music. Maybe you ought to move in and help me decorate. I have a great little flea market. You don't mean that.
Did you uh, hear anything from the rest of them? Yes, I talked to them yesterday. Is your father okay? He's fine. Peter, the FBI thinks that Sylvie did something. What did they say? Well, it's not so much what they said. It's the questions that they're asking. They suspect her. Hannah, they're just trying to shake everybody up. Well, they're doing a good job. Yes, they are. Peter. Look, I know we haven't been the best of friends. Oh. Hannah, this is not the time for that. I should have known better than to leave her alone with Callie. I never would have left her if you didn't say that maybe she should be left alone. I never said she should be left alone. You said that's how they do it in Europe. That's in Europe. That's not here. Yes, you like your bath time, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> do you ever wonder if maybe sometimes she just wants to be left alone? <laughs> what? Well, you hover around and everything. Maybe she, uh, maybe you're going to smother her or something. What is that? What is he talking about? I don't know either. Maybe she doesn't need to be doted on every second of the day. Oh, well, I think you're just jealous. I think I know what Callie needs. She needs her mommy all the time. Don't you? Yes, you do. I was only going to be gone a few minutes. I was trying to hurry. Oh, God, it was a bad decision, Sylvie. You don't think I know that? You don't think I see that now? Here, what are we gonna do? It's been three days. What's happening to her? What is she? They're gonna find her, are they? Do you remember when I called you from Salt Lake City a few weeks ago? When? The night she was crying. Do you remember you said you thought you were going to lose your mind because you couldn't stop her crying? No matter what you did, she wouldn't stop. Do you remember that? I know how that can feel, Sophie. I know that can run right through you until you want to do something. That was two weeks ago, Johnny. And if you were alone with her... Like the other night. That's what he thinks. This has nothing to do with him. This is you and me. All I'm asking you to do is just tell me the truth, Sylvie. And I'll protect you just like always before. You bastard. You think I did something to Kelly? You think I did something to our baby? Purpose, no. I... How can you look at me and say that? Just tell me. Tell you what? Would you just tell me where the baby is? I think you should go. Go! Get out right now! We'll be in touch. What is this? What's going on here? FBI's withdrawn from the case. Why? They don't believe it's a kidnapping. They're turning it back over to us. You mean they're giving up? Mrs. Pearson, as of today, this is back in our jurisdiction. We're treating it as a possible homicide. I have to tell you that Sylvia is now the focus of the investigation. I don't believe this. Look, she's not under arrest yet. 
Now, we have to ask her some questions. Will you bring her down to the station? Mrs. Pearson? Yes. Yeah, I will. I will. I just don't understand why you're questioning my daughter when you should be out there searching for Callie. There are some problems with Sylvie's story. Story? Inconsistent statements. That's because of the... The attention deficit thing, I know, but that doesn't help her. That hurts her. Uh, I am here. I am sitting right here. Don't talk about me like I'm not. I heard the 911 tapes. You're as calm as could be. Then after you reported your child missing, you tore the house apart. The FBI thinks you did that to make it look like someone else was there. I explained that already. You're just blaming her because you guys can't figure it I'm out. I'm sorry, but there's no evidence of a kidnapping here. No forced entry, no note, no motive. The evidence points to you, Sylvie. You don't know what this is like. I didn't do anything to Callie. I love my baby. Are you charging her? Look, I'm not saying that don't I Don't we have I... to stay here? No. Then let's go. Should we get a lawyer? I would. Sylvie, why didn't Peter come with you? He thinks I'm guilty, too. Dear Sylvie, I wanted to see you in person, but then I thought maybe it's better this way for the both of us. I think you were right last night to make me leave. I really don't know where we can go from here. Besides, it's too painful to be around the apartment right now. Everything reminded me of Callie. I'll be staying with my brother in Salt Lake. I'll call in a few days when we both had time to think about things. Maybe you'll be ready to tell me what happened. No matter what, I will always love you. All the things I said to you will always be true. Peter. We've seen over and over again how this artist uses complementary colors against one another. And now we're going to see how he uses contrasting subject matter. We see a woman seated. We assume that she's the mother. She's holding a child who is reaching towards the heavens with the promise of youth and the promise of the future. And yet the man, this huge presence, stands there with a gesture of ambiguity. Is it perhaps to persuade us that we should have no fear of him? We don't know. The mother and the child are seated within the dwelling. The man is outside, only able to look within. The man and the woman each look toward the child. So we can see how the focus of the painting begins to come towards the baby. Are they united by the baby? Or separated by it? And why is the man outside? first look at this painting, we have a tendency only to see the mother clutching at the child with hope and love. And yet a man looms behind her. Look again. What are his intentions? Lights. We'll continue this tomorrow. Thank you. Hello? Sylvie. I have this very weird feeling. 
feeling about Peter. So do I, Mom. He's taken every cent out of our bank account. What was that name again? Who do you want to speak to? Peter Walker. No. Peter. No. Well, are you related to Peter Walker? No, I don't know well, any Peter Walker. Uh, silly question, but do you know somebody who... No, okay. not... All right. Yeah, not thank you. Building. That's every damn Walker in Salt Lake City. Sylvie, are you sure he said his brother and not an uncle or some family member with a different last name? It was in his letter, Mom. Even I'm not that stupid. But you don't know the brother's first name. He never told me. I never asked. I don't believe this, Sylvie. You know nothing about this man. Mom, please don't start. But how can you go this far with somebody and not know these things? All right, all right. Where did he say his family's from? He said that he was from Salt Lake City. He, he said, he said his mother was dead. He said that, that his father was, was sick in a nursing home. He's hiding from you. He's got Callie, doesn't he? I think it's possible. But why? I don't know, Sylvie. Oh, well, at least that means that she might be all right. We have to find him. Uh, what about his old job? At the mall? Yeah, they've got to know something about him. B previous addresses, phone numbers, where he worked before, b business references. Look, I'll go over there no. now and... They're not going to give you anything. I have to do this myself. What do you mean by yourself? Sylvie, I don't think that's a very good idea. Why not? Well, because they're going to try and double-talk you. I'll just come along with you. No, Mom. I can do it. I'm not sure I can give you that information. Why not? I don't know. Privacy, stuff like that. I mean, you're not actually his wife. Well, we were going to get married. We had a baby together. Well, then why don't you know where he used to work? Well, we just didn't talk about it. <clears throat> Look, we had a fight. I mean, this whole thing has been really rough on us. Yeah, I... I... I read about it in the papers. I'm sorry about your, your problem. But... So, so he left. Just to cool off, but, but I don't know where he is, and I need to reach him. I mean, he must have something. A previous employer, references. Some way I can find him. Please, Mr. Decker, this is so important. files for you. Thank you. Talk to Matt. So, uh, how does new job work out? No, oh, he travels a lot. All right, thanks for Tell him we miss him. And we miss the game, too. All right, that's the place. Game? Yeah, he must have told you about the game, right? What game? It was just, uh, flirting. You're harmless, really. I mean... He'd, uh, pick someone out on the monitors, and we'd follow them wherever they went. He'd follow the girls. <laughs> He'd see one he liked, watch her for a while on the monitor. Then, uh, he'd go down to the floor, try to, you know, talk to her. <laughs> I thought it was kind of romantic, uh, like he was Romeo, looking for Juliet. Yeah, and the girls were always the same. I mean, uh, long hair, thin, you know. Sometimes he'd come back up all dejected, like, uh, no sense of humor, too stuck up, married. Yeah, this went on for a while. Then, 
one day he saw you and everything changed he couldn't take his eyes off you it was like uh, love at first sight and his search was over yeah but he never did it again after you he never even followed anybody anymore and you all stood here and watched yeah, at least you two found each other <laughs> I'm still looking. There's some security company in Utah. Gave me a pretty good report. Thank you. You think Peter took Callie? Yes. Why? Well, that's what you have to find out. Well, Sylvia, he was in Florida. Well, how do you know that? Maybe he... We checked, checked the hotel, the phone records. He was there. All right. Well, maybe he had help. Look, I just told you how he picked me up. There's no law against cruising malls for prospective dates. Yeah, but he was looking for a certain type of person. They said they all had long hair, thin. That's the type some guys go for. There's nothing wrong with that. But he was looking for an unattached girl who lived alone who had very few friends. Are you saying that Peter set you up to kidnap a baby that hadn't been born, hadn't been conceived? Yes. Hey, think about it. Always going away on trips, sales meetings, visiting his father in a nursing home. All lies. He set it up so that he could disappear with the baby. That's why he insisted on me giving birth at home. No nurses, no records, no hospitals. Just a midwife. He never wanted me to fix up the apartment, never wanted to buy anything, always told me to wait. And I see why. He never planned on staying. You're reading too much into this, Sylvie. I want you to take a little bit more time. Think it over, huh? Then where is he? Why did he disappear? It happens all the time. Trauma in the family, the husband splits. The chances are he's going to feel bad about the money. Show up again when he's had time to think things over. I've seen it a hundred times. Well, you're not going to see it this time. What do you want me to do? I want you to find him. I can't. Why not? Because he hasn't committed a crime. He kidnapped There's her. There's no proof. There's no motive. And you know what? Even if he has her, he's within his rights. He's her father. And I'm her mother. And he took her without my permission. He doesn't need your permission. The law would look at this as a domestic quarrel. Screw the law! Stop it. Sylvie. I like you. But you are the prime suspect in this case. It doesn't matter how I might feel about that. My job is to investigate. I can't go to my captain and tell him you want me to pursue your theories. It doesn't work that way. What am I supposed to do? You really believe Peter's out there with Callie? Yes. Then you have to find him. What do you mean? How? Start with the bank. See what they have on him for prior addresses, any information at all. See if you can do a credit check. Just go out there and search. People aren't just going to hand over this information. I can't involve myself in this any further. You can do it, Sophie. It's the only chance you have. This account was closed last week. I, I know. Um, my husband passed away just recently. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was um, wondering if you had um, any other accounts. Oh, gee, I don't think I, I can really do that. It is his address prior to moving here. I mean, he, he must have had to list a, a prior address to moving here, right? To open this account. Mrs. Walker, why don't you have a seat? Please, sit down. If you fill out this form, we'll process it and we'll see what we can do. Uh, 
so wonderful. My husband isn't really dead. He isn't my husband either. I'm trying to find him. And this is all I could think of. I'm sorry, but I can't. He took my baby. And he cleared all my money out of my account when he closed it. Did you say the account he closed was a joint account? I bet they do. And they, they're learning. Yes. Well, at least I could check for a prior address. I mean, I've heard some horror stories about adoption. Just wouldn't believe it. Oh, Helen's been having such an awful time. You know, it's really hard to adopt a healthy baby these days with all the drugs and diseases around. They've tried so hard. Now they're on a waiting list that she said it could take years. Well, you know how much they want to have a baby. Now, they've decided to try a private agency. Mrs. Walker? There's no other address. I'm sorry. That's fine. Thank you. Hey, you're okay now. I can't believe. How did you find me? I have you under 24 hour surveillance. Hey, hold it. Take it easy. I'm fine. It's okay. I should call an ambulance. No, no. I'm fine. I just haven't eaten all day, that's all. It's no big deal. I can't believe you have me under surveillance. I thought you were on my side. I told you not to count on that. Still have to do my job. So what did you find out at the bank? What if I told you that I know why Peter took Callie? Do tell would be the proper response, I believe. Adoption. He's already your father. Why would he do that? Not for him, for other people. What's the hardest kind of baby to adopt? I give up. Healthy white babies. Peter makes them for a living, and then he sells them. Is that the round, Marty? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Chris. That's why he covers his tracks so well, because he's a professional. Well, why would he come back at all? Why didn't he just take the baby and disappear? Well, maybe he wanted to come back and, and make sure that, you know, I got blamed for it. Maybe that's why he picked me, because I have ADD, and everyone will assume that I did something wrong. And the police would have me under surveillance and not him. <sighs> what an idiot I was. I mean, my whole life, I, I can't get a guy to look twice at me. And, and then Peter comes along. And I thought he was crazy to want to have a baby with me. But then I thought, here's my chance to prove that I can do something great. I can make a life. I can raise her, I can take care of her, I can be a mother. I can add something to the world that mattered. Oh, you did that. No matter what, you did that. But he made a joke out of it. Out of me. Sylvie, when you lose a child, especially like this, you do everything you can to convince yourself that there's some other explanation. Some... Some way she's got to be alive. I've seen it a hundred times. You've seen everything a hundred times, right? Some things I've even lived. It's unnatural, you know, to bury your own child. They're supposed to bury you. I'm stop thinking about it. You said you didn't have children. I don't anymore. I'm sorry. Long time ago. How? Oh. Yeah, I was shiny new 454 going down my street doing 60. Two seconds, it was all over. 
year later, my marriage was over. Bing, bang, boom. <clears throat> you know what? I think we better go. You don't believe a word I said, do you? It doesn't matter what I believe. No, it matters to me. Do you believe that I didn't hurt her? That Peter took her? I believe that you believe it. Thanks for dinner. Where's nice going, detective? Sylvie! Where the hell were you? I was scared to death. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a long story. I'll explain later. All right. Look, you got a call from a girl at the bank. Her name's Stacy. At the bank? You mean Tracy? Yeah, yeah. She said to call her at home. It's important. I did something I shouldn't have, but I couldn't help it. What? Well, at the bank, I just felt for you. I mean, to have your child taken. Did you find an account? Yes, not with our banks, though. At First Liberty. We merged a couple of months ago. He closed his account there the same day he opened the joint account. He had no way of knowing that in a few months the two banks were going to merge. What's in it? I have his canceled checks. Oh, God, if anyone ever knew I was doing this. They'll never know, I swear. I mean, about 20 or so, mostly bills, rent, like that. Is there anything written outside of Connecticut? Just one. Check made to cash for $200. The endorsement is signed Keith Blessing. It was cashed at First Monument in Tucson, Arizona. That's all I can find. I hope that helps you out. This may not mean anything. I think it does. I think Peter is in the baby selling business. Maybe this guy Blessing got a baby from Peter. Who knows? But why would Peter write him the check? Wouldn't it be the other way around? Well, maybe he works with Peter. You should tell Martinson. He's going to say everything that you just said. Besides. No crime has been committed, remember? He's useless. All the cops can do is clean up after the crime is over. Why don't you just try and call him? You gotta think about what you're doing, Sylvie. I don't want to give him a chance to warn Peter. I just want to show up on his doorstep. This is the only clue I've got, Mom, and the only clue I'm gonna get. Sylvie, what are you gonna do if you find him? I don't know. That's not good enough. Well, I think I've done a pretty good job so far, Mom. I'll manage. Manage? You haven't even been on an airplane. You can't just go I off so and... I am so sick of hearing what I can't do. You know something? I have no idea what I can't do or what I can do. You know, Peter was right about one thing, Mom. It always made me feel like I was too stupid to do things that... No, I'm wait, wait, wait a minute. That is not fair. You were special. You needed protection. What I needed was confidence. I needed to believe in myself just a little bit, but you never let me do that. Well, now I'm going to do it. I'm going to go there. I'm going to find out who this guy Keith is. I'm going to find out where Peter is, and I'm going to get my baby back.
06 from Tours, and now we're arriving at 832. Passenger Tim Reynolds, please pick up a white courtesy phone. Hello. Flight 128 to Detroit, now boarding at gate 22. Take that knife on the plane. Oh man, I forgot to put it in my bag. That's Go all. Go back to the ticket counter and put the knife in your luggage. Come on, I'm gonna miss my flight. Please the airport policy. So let's go. What about my plane? We'll get you on the plane, so don't worry. Flight 106 from Boston. Now arriving. I'll just need a credit card and your driver's license. By the way, we have a special this month. You can have a car phone at no extra charge. That's yeah, fine. can I do for you? Oh, yeah. My husband and I, um, you know, we're going to be moving here, and, well, I've been asking everybody if they know of any houses coming on the market. You want to move here? Yeah. We just have a tiny apartment back east. We're looking for a starter house. Well, this neighborhood's been great. We really like it. Where back east? Connecticut. Really? That's where my baby was born. It's really nice back there, isn't it? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just traveled a lot today. It's been a long one, has it? Yeah. Well, listen, my cousin is a real estate agent, so why don't I give you his number? That'd be great. Yeah? Okay, come on in. Get out of the sun. Thank you. Okay. Have a seat. Now, if I can only find my address book. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. Okay. Is 
name is Jim, so just tell him Joanna sent you. That's me. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Marie. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Tucson. Sit down. So, uh, have you been here long? Yeah, about two years. Now that we have Lily, we're going to be looking for a place, too, so... Lily. That's nice. Hmm. How old? Two months. Wow. You look great for someone who just had a baby. I don't know. I wish. She was adopted. Adopted? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's... It's just that my husband and I have been trying to adopt a baby. So, did you have an agency in Connecticut? I mean, I'd really like to know how you did it. Well, that's kind of a long, long story, and I've got something on the stove, so sorry I... Yeah, well, now's just a bad time, but I understand. Maybe another day. Well, God, I didn't know what you're going through. I mean, I didn't even have anybody to talk to about it. So, wait. Where are you staying? A motel near the airport. Do you maybe want to come by tomorrow? She takes a nap around 11. Really? Would that be okay? Sure, certainly. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joanna. Take care. Connecticut. She said the baby was born in Connecticut. And she said she was two months old, exactly the same age Callie would be. So you're telling me that someone hired Peter to make a baby, steal it, and then sell it to them? Look, all I'm saying is that Peter was definitely looking for a certain kind of woman who would deliver a certain kind of baby. And maybe the Blessings don't even know he's doing it. Then we have to call someone. You can't be out there playing detective on your own. I'm just going to go back tomorrow and make sure it's Callie, and then I'll call Martinson, okay? Are you okay? Never been better. Do you have enough money? Do you need anything? Mom, you gave me plenty. Can I ask you something? What? This whole time, everybody thought that... that it was me that did something to Callie. Everybody except you. How come I, I thought you would have been the first person to think that? I saw you with the baby. I saw how much you loved her. I guess no one else saw that. Thank God for naps. Otherwise, I'd never get anything done. Does she sleep through the night? No, not often. It drives my husband nuts. I love it. You'll see. Have you tried in vitro? In vitro? Yeah, to get pregnant. Oh, yeah, we, we've tried it all. So did we. For two years. It just wasn't happening. So then we decided to adopt. And there's so many rules. Well, you want this certain baby you have in your mind that you want to adopt, and they're hard to find. And then they told us that we might not even wind up with an infant. We might have to take a four-year-old. So how did you end up in Connecticut? Keith found out about these surrogacy deals, where you put an ad in the paper and you find a woman who's willing to have the baby for you through artificial insemination. A woman who's willing? Yeah, sounds kind of creepy, I know. But what you do is you try to find this woman who kind of looks like you, and she gets a nice fee. Anyway, Keith had found out about this guy who knew how to put it all together. But he was in Connecticut. There's a guy in Connecticut? Yeah. What was his name? His name was, um, like Watson or Walker? Peter Walker? Yeah, do you know him? Yeah, I might have heard of him. Well, this guy practically ran our lives for nine months. I mean, Keith was flying all over the place, from Connecticut to Florida. It was like one complication after another. And he seemed a little slippery to me, but you do what you gotta do. Oh, I've got some clothes out on the line. Do you want to come out with me? Sure. Okay. It must be really hard for the mother to give up her baby. Yeah, I guess. 
Besides the papers and everything. I don't really know. I had a job then. I had to stay here and work because Keith was losing so many hours on his job. And Walker thought it'd be best if Keith dealt with this woman. She was supposed to be a little emotionally unstable. Have to be really careful with the birth mother. Iris kept us up for six weeks. She kept changing her mind, you know? Keith had to keep flying back there. at my friend Gail's house because I was going to make dinner. It's our anniversary today. Congratulations. Thanks, but that was Gail, and she said that Lily's screaming her head off. I forgot to leave a bottle, so I'm really sorry. No about problem. That. Okay, this is what it's like when you have a baby. You never finish a conversation. Well, you know? Thank you for everything. Okay, well, good luck. It has to be Callie. But you don't know. For God's sakes, Martinson, what else do you want? It all matches up. The couple hired Peter to do the surrogacy for them. And they probably had no idea that he was going to go out and make the baby himself and then steal it. All right, now listen. She said tomorrow she's going to take the baby to the park. So all right, look. I'm going to call the Tucson PD tomorrow. There's a Detective Rivera that I want you to... Tomorrow? Why not tonight? Look, Sylvie, let's not blow this. You got this for now. Let's do it right. Now, the, the first thing you have to do is positively identify the baby. That's the most important thing. Positive ID, understand? Yeah, I understand. All right, good. And then you go to the cops. You find Rivera, and you let them take it from there. You do not confront the blessings yourself, understood? OK, all right. OK. Your mother's worried about you. Well, she doesn't need to be. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Are you drunk? If that's what you're worried about. I wasn't worried. Remember the name. Rivera. I wouldn't be surprised at things I remember lately. No, I hope that doesn't include what I said in the car the other night. Some things are better off forgetting. Yeah, I'll turn to that. I'm sorry, though. I didn't mean it. You know, professional cynic and all that. An apology. That must have been very difficult for you. Excruciating. Well, you better get some sleep. Yeah. Tomorrow's a big day. The biggest.
Everything's gonna be fine. Just let me do the talking. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. That's him. That is Peter Walker. Just take it easy. He's the same man who took my baby. Ma'am, just He kidnapped down. her from my home. There's no surrogacy, no lawyers, no papers, and there sure as hell was no artificial What do you want from me? You know what no, I you want. No, you signed your rights away from the baby. Not. That's what you, you did. Talk. Oh, just calm down. Everyone shut up for one second. Now, is this her baby? Yes, it is, and she signed away the parental rights. I have papers to prove that. I did not. You have some kind of papers, sir? Yes, sir, I do. He, he lived with me. He traveled a lot. You were coming here, weren't you? You'd stop off in Florida to make your phone calls to me. There was no business, no, no father in a nursing home. My father... No, no father in a nursing home? My father is in a nursing home. I go visit him all the time. Look, this is ridiculous. I'll bet, I'll bet as soon as he brought the baby home, he left right away, didn't he? Didn't he? It was because he had to come back. He had to come back to start dropping hints to the cops that maybe I did something to Callie. He had people believing that I actually killed my own baby. This is pathetic. Sir, could we see those papers? You sure can. You have to believe me. I don't want to hurt you. Papers say that the baby belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Blessing. Well, no, they so, said they're fake. Well, they look pretty real to us, ma'am. I know this must be hard on you, but you just no, have to no, wait, wait, wait. The, 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 the police know about this in Connecticut. They know about it. Who they would they that call the be, police, ma'am. A detective in Hartford called a detective here, ma'am. What's the name of the detective here? I know his name. Just give me a second, okay? I, 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 I can think of it. Just, I have trouble remembering. Just give me a second. What's wrong, Sylvie? Your brain a little fuzzy? Sylvie, you're going to have to leave now. Come on, let's go. <gasps> but I can't leave my baby Look, again. you can go down to the station house with us. We can talk about it again. But for right now, we're going to have to leave. Please, ma'am. How could you do this to me? How? have here seems to be a custody dispute involving the biological father. What about me? I'm the biological mother. Well, according to some of my men, he has papers saying that you gave up your parental rights. I never gave up my rights. He took her. You don't seem to understand. And then he got the FBI to think that I killed her. Miss Pearson, I'll tell you what I told Detective Martinson. I have no jurisdiction over what he may or may not have done in Connecticut. I'm only worried about Tucson. Now, the best thing I can tell you to do is to go to district court on Monday. They'll help Monday. you. Monday, Monday. No, no, he kidnapped her. They're going to be he gone. He is the father. It's not against the law for him to be with his child. He is with her against my will. And that makes it a custody dispute. Let me get this straight. If you were a stranger, you would go out there and you would stop him. Because we had sex. He can do whatever he wants. I have no power. You have power, Miss Pearson, in the courts on Monday. You wanted the baby, didn't you? You didn't have any questions when I came home. You took that woman's baby. I couldn't find a surrogate, Joanna. I tried. I swear to God, I... Can we talk about this from the car? Where are we going, Keith? Away from here. Why? Because I don't want her coming back and disrupting you and the baby. He slept with her. Yes, Joanne, I slept with her. Is that what you want to hear? I slept with her. And she didn't know anything about it, did she? Joanna, she was just a mall rat. She was a means to an end. That's it. I can't believe this. Look, we tried everything, didn't we? We spent all our money, two years of our lives. What do you want? For God's sake, she can have more babies. It... This is our only chance, isn't it? Damn it, Joanna.
I never meant for her to have a baby for so long. And I never meant for her to get so attached. But you see, I had to plan it. I, I just couldn't take the baby. I, she was always around. I had to plan it. I had to wait for the right time. It was driving me crazy. I could not stand being away from you for so long. You gotta believe me. I just wanted us to have our family. I wanted the three of us to be together. That's what I was doing it for. I was doing it for us. So I flew up from Florida that morning. I was going to take her no matter what. Funny thing is, it only took a second. yourself one question. Do you want them to take Lily? Yes or no? He said there was nothing they could do. But they're going to leave and we're not going to be able to find them. Take it easy, honey. I'm on my way. No, no, that's not going to do any good. Look, I'll see if I can come up with a warrant on this end. We know he used a false identity. Maybe we can get him on some kind of fraud. Then I'll call Rivera. Hurry, hurry, please. You done really well. You know that, don't you? I would have done a lot better if I didn't have the police in my way. Yep. patient there by the name of uh, Blessing? Please. Yes, ma'am, we do. Uh, you want me to connect you directly to his room? That won't be necessary. Thank you. Hang on, I gotta call the nursing home. Now? I want my baby. She's mine, and you know it. I can't let go of her. She's my little girl. She's all I have. He'll come for you. Let him. Okay. <laughs> Take my car, just go. <laughs> Listen, I just want you to know something. 
I'm really, really sorry for what he did to you. I'm so sorry what he did to you. Thank you for taking good care of my girl. Well, I don't know. You paged me. I would have been a really good mother. I know. Bilbay! Bilbay! Boston to Hartford. You better hurry, it's already boarding. Flight 119 gets in at 1125. Oh, Mom, don't worry, I'm fine. Ha, ha, ha. 